Odd number problems from chapter 6, 15 through 21. 15. A distribution of SAT scores is normal with a mean of 500 and a standard deviation of 100. What SAT score, x value, separates the top 15% of the distribution from the rest? So let's sketch this out. Again, given the values identified, we know that the mean is equal to 500. Standard deviation is equal to 100. And we want to find out what is the x value that separates the top 15 percent. Again, we understand that as the tail of the distribution. So again, we want to find out what is x equal to here um, that separates the top 15 percent of the distribution. So what we're going to do is, again, recognize that what we're solving for in this case is x. So x is equal to mu plus our standard deviation multiplied by our z-score. Let's replace variables and see what we already have. We know what the mean is. It's 500 plus the standard deviation which is 100 and now we need to find the z-score. And again to do so we're going to begin by converting that percentage of 15 percent into a proportion. So 15 divided by 100 gives us 0.1500 and we're going to use the unit normal table utilizing the column that represents the proportion in the tail and look for 0 0.1500, again the closest value to that, and then report what z is equal to. What is z equal to? Okay, so let's utilize our unit normal table. Okay, again we're going to enter the table using column c, which is the tail. And the proportion we're looking for, the closest proportion is one point or the closest value to this of 0 0.1500 and we want to identify the z-score that corresponds to that proportion in the tail. And so the closest thing that we come to is right about here and there we see a z-score of 1.04. 1.04. So let's put, take that back to our um, sketch and our equation. Okay, so again, given our unit normal table, now we've identified that z is equal to 1.04. So again, down here, the z, so we're looking for the score that's 1.04 standard deviation units above the mean. To calculate that, we use our equation. So we have the mean added to the product of our standard deviation unit multiplied by the z-score. Again, we're saying this particular score of interest is 1.04 standard deviation units above the mean. So one of these and then 0 0.04 of those added to 500. So if we do our calculation, we should get an x value equal to 604. And let's go back and make sense of this. So what we're saying is x here that separates the top 15% of the distribution of SAT scores, that, that score is a 604. So a score of 604 separates the top 15% of those who take the SAT. So a university may say we're only taking those who score in the 15, um, 15th percentile. So at that score or above, that score is 604 or above. Okay, so the next one, very similar, using the same data. So we have a SAT distribution where the mean is equal to 500 and standard deviation is equal to 100. And we want to find out what is the x value that separates the top 10%. Again, that 10% is in what we refer to as the tail. So what is x equal here? Again, we're going to use our x equation. x equals mu plus the standard deviation multiplied by our z-score. What do we already know? We have the mean, we have the standard deviation units, Oops. and now we just need to figure out what z is equal to. Again, we're going to convert that 10% to proportion, so 10 divided by 100, we get 0 0.1000, and that's the value we're going to look for in the tail, in the tail to find our z score. So what is z equal to? that separates the top 10% of the distribution. Okay, so again, we're going to look for a proportion point one, one zero 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 in the tail and report Z. 
So we move our way down, and here we find um, a proportion of 0 0.1003. That's the closest that we'll get, and the z is 1.28. And we're going to use that in our equation. So again, we just found that z is equal to 1.28. So now our goal is to find out what is x equal to that uh, represents 1.28 standard deviation units above the mean. So again, our equation is the mean, 500, added to the product of the standard deviation multiplied by the z-score because this x value is 1, one of these, and 0.28 of these. So we're going to do the math. So 1.28 multiplied by 100 added to 500, and we come up with 628. So again, going back over here, we now understand that a score of... 628, which is the equivalent of a z-score of 1.28. So a score of 628 partitions the distribution off with the 10% um, in the tail, meaning that, um, again, if a, a university were to say, we will only take the um, individuals in the 10th percentile on the SAT um, assessment, that means that students would have to score a 628 or above a 628. Percentiles are always understood at that score and above, that score and above. Okay, last one using the same um, parameters. We have a SAT distribution of, uh, with a mean of 500, standard deviation equal to 100, and now we want to know what is the X value, what is the SAT score that partitions the distribution off where we have 2% in the tail? So what is X equal to? So this is, you know, a, a standard a very prestigious university would set. We're only going to take those in the top 2 percentile um, bracket or those scoring at the second percentile. So again, we're going to use our equation, x is equal to mu plus standard deviation multiplied by z, x is equal to 500 plus our standard deviation of 100 multiplied by our z-score, which is what we're going to find. To do so, we need to convert that 2% into a proportion, so 0 0.02. And we're going to use the tail, again this is the tail that we're interested in, to find what z is equal to. What is the z value that partitions the distribution with 2% off in the tail to the right of the mean. Okay, so here's our z distribution. Again, we're looking for a proportion of 0 0.020 0 in the tail. In the tail. So we're going to go down um, until we find something very close to that. And the closest thing we find is this one here, 0 0.0202, and that corresponds to a z-score, z equal to 2.05. So we're going to use that in our equation. So now we have found that z is equal to 2.05. So now we want to find out what is the x value that's 2.05 standard deviation units above the mean. To do so, we're going to use our equation. x is equal to the mean plus the product of our standard deviation multiplied by the z of 2.05. And we find that the x value is equal to 705. So if you score above 705 on the SAT, that puts you in the second percentile of the distribution, meaning that only 2% um, or less of individuals who take the SAT would score that score or higher than the score of 705. So again, going back here, we again, and you always want to go back and write your values so that um, you make sense. Again, had we been talking about the um, left side of the distribution and looking at the top 60%, um, that would be partitioning off the distribution where the x value of interest is below the mean. Again, what I'm saying is the top 60%, 60% here. We want to find out what the x value is here. This um, indicates that the z-score would be a negative value, 
negative value because, again, it's to the left of the mean. So just be conscientious of that, and, and sketching it out is really going to prevent you from making those mistakes of reporting the z-score incorrectly. Um, so if you place the x value on the distribution, you can um, reconcile your answer to make sure that given the value of the mean, the score of 705 would certainly be to the right. Um, but if we were talking about negative 2.05 as the z-score, then that would place us um, to the left of the mean. Number 17, a recent newspaper article reported that results of a survey of well-educated suburban parents. The responses to one question indicated that by age 2, children are watching on av an average of 60 minutes of television each day. Assuming that the distribution of television watch watching is normal with a standard deviation of 25 minutes, find each of the following proportions. So what is the proportion of children that watch more than 90 minutes of television per day? So again, given our distribution. We have 60 representing the mean. 90 minutes would be to the right of the distribution, 90 minutes, and this is the area of interest. So what proportion of two-year-old children is the probability of obtaining an x value greater than 90 minutes? So we're going to convert that into an, a z value. z is equal to x, 90, minus mu, 60, divided by our standard deviation, 25, and we get 1.20. So this becomes 0. This is 1.20. So this is the same as saying the probability of a z value greater than 1. Point z value greater than 1.20. That's the area of the normal distribution that we're interested in. So we're going to utilize our unit normal table and again given the sketch we understand this to be the tail so that's the proportion that we're going to report. Okay so we're going to enter the, the table using column A using a z-score 1.20 and we're going to report the tail in the distribution so this is the value we're interested in and again the proportion of the tail is 0.1151 So given what we found in the unit normal table, this is equal to 0 0.1151. And again, what is the probability of, of um, selecting a two-year-old uh, from the population that watches more than 91 minutes of television each day? Again, there's an 11.51% chance that we would select a child that's two years old that watches more than 90 minutes of television um, per day, or the proportion of um, two-year-olds that watch more than 90 minutes of television per day is equal to 0 0.1151. All right, next one, um, we have our distribution with the mean television watching of 60 minutes per day. We're interested in um, figuring out the proportion of the distribution of two-year-old children that watch less than 20 minutes. Good for them. <laughs> 20 minutes of television a day. And again, the tail is the area of interest. So a probability of x value less than 20 minutes, we're going to convert that to a z-score. z is equal to 20 minus 60, so score minus the mean, divided by standard deviation of 25, and we get a z-score equal to negative 1.6, so negative 1.6, this is 0. So we're going to use our z-score. Again, now we can rewrite this as a probability pertaining to a z-score, so the probability of obtaining a z-value that's less than negative 1.6. We're going to use our unit normal table to come up with this answer. Okay, so we're going to enter the unit normal table using the z-value of 1.6, and the proportion of interest is going to be the, the tail, given our sketch. So 1.6 right here in the area in the tail is 0 0.0548. So given what we found in our unit normal table, this proportion is 0 0.0548 to answer our probability statement. What is the chance of selecting a two-year-old from the population that watches less than um, 20 minutes of television per day? So the proportion that represents that parameter is 0 0.05 Four, eight, or there's a 5.48% chance that if we randomly selected a two-year-old child from the population, 
they would report watching less than 20 minutes of television per day. Number 19, a consumer survey indicates that the average household spends on average $185 on gross groceries each week. The distribution of spending amount is approximately normal with the standard deviation $25. Based on this distribution, what proportion of the population spends more than $200 per week on groceries? All right, so given our parameters, we have $185 representing the mean, and we want to establish um, this marker of $200 a month, excuse me, a week on groceries. And because it says more, we're going to shade to the right, right, $200 or more. So our probability statement is X greater than $200 per week. We're going to convert that to a Z score, 200, the score minus the mean of 185, divided by the standard deviation of 25. And we get a Z score equal to. 0 0.60 and we're going to use that again this represents the tail of the distribution because it's greater than a score of 200 we're going to rewrite the probability statement uh, according to the z score so probability of a z score greater than 0 0.60 and we're going to utilize our unit normal table to come up with the answer Okay, so we're going to enter the, the um, unit normal table using our z-score equal to 0 0.60 and report the area in the tail. So 0 0.60 is here, area in the tail, proportion in the tail is um, 0.2743. We'll go back to our sketch. So what we found in our normal distribution, that proportion or the probability is 0.27. 4, 3. Again, this is a z-score of 0, 0.6, so the probability of obtaining a z-score greater than 0.6, um, the proportion is 0.2743, or tw there's a 27.43% chance that you would randomly select um, a household that spends more than $200 um, per week on groceries. Again, that score of $200 um, spent on groceries per week puts that value at 0.6 standard deviation units above the mean. Alright, let's consider the next one. The next one says let's take into consideration um, randomly selecting a family that spends less than $150. So they're less than the norm. Again, so less than 150 because it says less, it's the shaded areas to the left. It's still the tail that we're interested in. It's still the tail. And we're going to state this as the probability of an x value less than less than 150. Convert it to z score. Score 150 minus the mean 185 divided by a standard deviation of 25. We get a z score equal to negative 1.40. 1.40. So we want to find out what is the um, proportion or um, of the distribution that of those spending money on groceries per week that the value would be less than $150 equivalent to a z-score so the probability of a z-score less than negative 1.40 we're going to utilize our unit normal table to find the answer so here's our z-distribution we have a, um, interest in the z-score 1.40 again it was negative but uh, we use the positive equivalent because the normal distribution does not report values as negatives. And here's the z-score of 1.4, and the tail is the area of interest, which is 0 0.0808. We go back to our sketch. So what we found was the probability of proportion is equal to 0 0.0808. Or we could think of it as the approximate 8% chance that if we randomly selected a family from the population that they would spend less than $150 per week on groceries. Okay, number 19, a consumer survey. Again, relating to the previous example where the health, average household spends $185 on groceries each week with a um, standard deviation of $25. How much money do you need to spend to... Um, to be in, to be in, to, sorry for the typo, to be 
in the top 20% of the distribution. So we're going to sketch this out. Again, in this case, we're looking for the X value. So $185 is the average amount that most households spend on groceries per week. We want to know what is the X value right, that partitions the top 20% of the distribution. And again, we're solving for X. In other words, what amount of money do, does one have to spend to place them in the top 20% um, in, in terms of how much money they spend per week on groceries? So we're going to um, solve for X. X is equal to the mu plus standard deviation multiplied by Z. What do we already know? The mean is $185 plus the standard deviation of $25 and we're going to multiply by the z-score. To find the z-score, we're going to convert 20% into a decimal, so that would be 0 0.2000, and we're going to find the corresponding z-score, the corresponding z-score. So let's use our unit normal table, and again, the proportion of 0 0.200 is going to be found in the tail, given what we've sketched here. It would be in the tail, and then we're going to find the z-score. Okay, so here's our unit normal table. Again, we're looking for a proportion 0 0.2000, the closest thing to it, to report our z-score. And again, we're going to utilize the tail, given our sketch, the tail. We're looking for the top 20%. Um, so we go down, and the closest thing we find is 0 0.2005. The z-score is 0 0.84. So we're going to use that in our equation. So given what we just found, the z-score is equal to 0.84. So again, we're looking for a score that's 0.84 standard deviation units above the mean. So we can replace that value. So 25 multiplied by 0.84 added to 185, and we get 204. So 200, so what we just found is that this x value right, that partitions the top 20% off of the distribution is equal to $204. So one must spend $204 or more than that to be in the top 20% of um, money spent on groceries per week. Okay, last one, 21. Rochester, New York averages 21.9 inches of snow for the month of December. The distribution of snowfall amounts is approximately normal with a standard deviation of 6.5 inches. This year, a local jewelry store is advertising a refund of 50% off all purchases made in December if Rochester finishes the month with more than 3 feet, 36 inches of total snowfall. What is the probability the jewelry store will have to pay off on its promise? So let's take into consider what's given. So the mean of snowfall in Rochester, New York is 21.9 inches and um, with a standard deviation equal to 6.5 inches. We want to know what is the likelihood that um, the month of December in Rochester, New York will finish off with more than 36 inches of snow. So 36 inches is greater than 21.9, so it would be to the right of the mean. So let's partition that off, so 36 inches here. And um, so the, what is the probability that the jewelry store will have to pay off on its promotion of granting 50% off all purchases? So if the month of December in Rochester, New York finishes with 36 inches of snow or more, or more, then they must refund 50% of all purchases in December. So, again, the probability of x greater than 36 inches, we'll convert that to a z-score, so the score of 36 minus 21.9 divided by standard deviation of 6.5, we get a z-score equal to, now if you do this in your calculators, this is something I want to stress, um, it should display 2.169, and again, granted um, that the z-distribution reports z-scores on two digits right of the decimal, you want to adhere to the standard rounding rule. So the z-score of interest will actually be 2.17. Okay, so don't make the mistake. Many students look up 2.16 and they come up with the wrong proportion. 
So given the value of 9, we would round up to 2.17. All right, so then we can rewrite this as the probability of a z-score greater than 2.17. So this is 0, 2.17. Again, we've established that the common region resides within one standard deviation unit um, above and below the mean. Again, approximately 70% of scores will fall within that range. So we should get the sense that anything outside of that is unlikely. So here we're working with a z-score of 2.17. So now let's find out what is the probability of um, obtaining a z-score greater than 2.17 which would be the same as saying um, the probability of obtaining um, a score in, in inches of snow greater than 36 inches. Okay, in our unit normal table, we're going to look for a z-score equal to 2.17. And we find it here, and the area in the tail is equal to 0 0.0150. So we'll use that back in our sketch. So now we've identified the proportion of um, or the probability of obtaining the z-score greater than 2.17, and that was equal to 0 0.01150. In other words, we can think of this as there's a 1.5% chance, chance that the jewelry store will have to Store will have to pay off on its promise. So it's very unlikely, right? We would conclude that there, if there's only a one and a half percent chance that uh, Rochester, New York would finish the month of December with more than 36 inches of snow. It's very unlikely that if you purchase, made a purchase in that jewelry store that you're going to get back 50% of that purchase. Um, so again, giving you a, a real life example of how to understand the normal distribution and probability. So um, someone without any understanding of um, probability may think that this is a good good idea and it's a good idea to purchase from this particular jewelry store again seeing how statistics can be used in advertisement to persuade individuals um, and those who don't have a basic understanding of statistics are more easily persuaded than those who do so given the probability of this happening you would choose to shop elsewhere or not um, be taken advantage of by this um, um, gimmick. Again, some students um, get confused by this 50%, but that's irrelevant to this problem. So given the word problem we're working with, always pay attention to what's necessary and what is just a, a distraction. In this case, that 50% off is a distraction and not part of having to solve this particular item.